there, it's Liam from Unique Cars and Parts, and I'm with Len Kurd, and I'm at the Vietnam Veterans Museum in Phillip Island. I've got the title right, haven't I, Len? You certainly have, yeah, it's spot on. And uh, we're standing in front of a, a lot- lottery bin, or a lottery barrel, barrel yeah. and it's the one lottery that you really wouldn't want to win, is it? <laughs> no, it's, uh, a lot of people say it's the only, only lottery I won, but uh, just out of interest with that barrel... It's uh, made in 1915. It's actually owned by Tattersalls, and we have it on permanent loan. And uh, that, that is the, uh, the actual barrel that the, the numbers used to come out of. So for those that aren't, aren't familiar with the way that the barrel system and the, and the lottery worked, it was compulsory back in, uh, back in the day, back in the 60s, yeah. that every uh, young Australian male had to, had to join the National Service. It was a compulsory army conscription, if you will. Actually had to register. There was uh, some 800,000, 800,284, I think it was, uh, were required to register. Uh, of that uh, 800,000 that were required to register, uh, a little over 60,000 were actually called up. And of the 60,000 that were called up, uh, 15,200 odd served in Vietnam. So um, the uh, political agitators of the day would have you believe it was a, a national service and war. Uh, the national service content was less than 25%. Okay, and you told me before we got the press record on the camera mm. that you were a volunteer, but it was because some of your mates had gone through national service, yeah. some others hadn't, mm. and you felt that you needed to go and help your mates and be part of it. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, um, and one of my friends was already in Vietnam. He, he joined the Army in 1964, and he's one of the first Australians in Vietnam. And um, a few of my friends were called up in the first and second intake. I was deferred, so uh, I volunteered and uh, I ended up doing nine years all up. And uh, and you, you were over there from 67 to 68? Yes, yeah, um, <coughs> uh, April 1967 to March 1968, yeah. Okay, and and exactly with the with the people that were unlucky enough to have their numbers drawn out of this, it, the, each individual wasn't given a number. It was based on a date of birth, wasn't it? A uh, date of birth, yes, and the statisticians worked out how many people they would need to fill what number of jobs. And that uh, then dictated how many barrel, how many barrels, sorry, how many marbles came out of the barrel, and uh, they knew approximately how many people were born on those dates and all that sort of thing. And it was quite uh, scientifically worked out, apparently, which I wasn't aware of at the time. But yeah, and, and, and arguably the most famous conscript for, uh, from this from this lottery was uh, Normie Rowan. I believe he's coming down here to play. Uh, so I believe that uh, I've. Going back a few years now, I had uh, a bit of dealings with Norm. Actually, had the honour of being up on stage with him for about three and a half hours one time. But the uh, interesting thing about Norm was that he was the only one in his intake with that birth date. And uh, <laughs> he was he, he he lucked out twice. Uh, yes, true, but. Um, uh, I, I don't know whether it's, it's fact or not, but it just uh, occurred to me that uh, Elvis Presley and Normie Rowe was the king of king of pop. Uh, Elvis Presley was conscripted in the military forces and uh, went in the armoured corps. Norm was called up, the only one on his birth date, and uh, went in the armoured corps. So. Well, we were we were fortunate enough, Len, in 2015 to go on the Gallipoli 2015 cruise, 100th anniversary, and Normie Rowe was one of the entertainers on that ship, and let me say, he has not lost it at all. He's still a great performer. So if he gets down here, you, you're in for a treat. He really And, and we got to socialise with him. Uh, the, the Vietnam vets, there's a lot of them on the ship, and they would they would congregate, and Normie Rowe was always there. I sort of left him alone because um, I didn't go to Vietnam. I was too young, fortunately. But, um, yeah, Normie Rowe, what a consummate performer, a great guy. Um, Lovely man. And and so this 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 particular barrel it's so small you know I was imagining I guess what I've seen in Tatsoto you know the big the big ball with the with the numbers popping out but it was just a, a small barrel like this and over here these tiny little I guess a giant pea sized num uh, balls that have got a, a, a date on them yeah. uh, not actually a date just a number and as I say they were they were the uh, marbles used to um, draw the Tattersall's draw as it was in those days. And uh, as an example, if number 32 came out and your birthday was the 1st of February, you were called up. 
And uh, and just to reflect on just <laughs> how unlucky you would be if you didn't want to go to war and had your number pulled up, right next door we've got the first veteran or the first national service enlistee that was killed in action. Yeah. Yeah, Cyril Nowak, and he'd only been in Vietnam a, a very short space of time, and um, he... Uh, was on on his first operation, and uh, there was two companies operating. Uh, the official version was killed in uh, killed in action, enemy fire. But um, a lot of the um, members of his company and the other company who were operating very close together. They still contend it may have been friendly fire. Well, he was. He was look, ju judging by the photos you've got of him, he was a strapping young lad, born in forty five. So he lived the, the the ripe old age of 21. Yep, yeah, exactly. And um, uh, the <clears throat> interesting point is the uh, average age of the national servicemen in Vietnam was 21, and the average age of the Second World War veteran was uh, 26. So there was it was a lot younger generation that went through. A uh, much younger generation, and the... Average age, uh, average time in action for a Second World War soldier, excluding things like Gallipoli and uh, Trabuk, et cetera, at, uh, the average time in action was four to six months over the five years. And I can't speak for anyone else, but uh, my unit, uh, 106 Battery, we spent 279 days on operation in 11 and a half months. So, that, that's a lot of that's a lot of time out out in the field, I guess. Yeah, a bit of difference. Yeah. How would you describe? Was there a particular description when you were, you know, f fighting at the front line? Um, well, there was no actual front line per se, but uh, uh, my unit uh, right throughout the uh, the tour, we supported seven battalion. Uh, each battalion had a battery of artillery supporting them, and uh, we had a. Uh, um, what was called an FA party, Forward Observers Party, with each of the companies of the uh, infantry, and we worked hand in glove with the infantry uh, to the extent on some, <coughs> excuse me, uh, some operations where uh, uh, tourist support wasn't required, like a, a coordinate search of a village where we'd coordinate off at night and then go and search it during the day. Uh, we would just become another company of uh, 7 Battalion, and to the extent now, uh, on the 6th of August uh, each year, uh, we join a company, 7th Battalion, who were involved in the <coughs> Battle of Sui Chow Fa, which is 12 days short of 12 months after Long Tan, and the same thing all over again. The same three North Vietnamese regiments up against one company, and we supported 7th Battalion in that, and uh, we now celebrate uh, Sui Chow Fa Day with a company 52 years later. So that sounds as important as uh, the Battle of Long Tan, historically. Mm. Oh, it certainly was. Long Tan was the first big one, but not by no means the only one. Uh, as I say, uh, August 67 was uh, Sui Chow Fa. May 1968 was Coral Belmoral. Seemed every year we had a big, big engagement. Uh, Coral was probably the biggest. Went on over 26 days. Uh, and uh, the uh, mortar platoon and two of the guns at the fire support base were actually overrun. So, uh, it, and I'm guessing by the sound of that, he heavy casualties. Uh, yeah, there's, uh, well, there was 18 killed at uh, Long Tan in a three hour period, but over the uh, uh, Coral Belmoral, which went over 26 days, uh, almost a month, I think it was 28 killed. And uh, in, in the initial attack, it was uh, 12 on the first night, yeah. 12 in one night. Mm. Mm. Well, um, thanks thanks again, Len, for discussing this. We're going to move over and have a look at some other equipment, seeing as you're in the artillery. But um, I hope you've enjoyed this and um, hope it gives you a different perspective of of winning or losing the lottery it's the it's the only lottery you don't want your number to come up and um for the guys that were were sent over there um it was a, a bit of a tragedy really wasn't it that if I can just add one thing here liam um i served with national servicemen in what was referred to as other ranks uh, below the rank of sergeant we were probably 50 50 national servicemen um uh, and um, they all um, 
did, did a magnificent job and there was absolutely no distinction between a regular soldier and a, uh, a national serviceman. There, there was no bitterness that, that their number had come up? And no, no, that not at all. And I can only speak from my, my experience. Um, I went through my training with national servicemen and there was 18 on the gun course and the uh, biggest majority of them were national servicemen and we were given the choice of uh, being posted to Eastern Command or Northern Command. And we were told categorically, if you elect to go to Northern Command, you will go to Vietnam. 17 on the gun course put their hand up for Northern Command. The only one that didn't was actually a regular soldier, recently married and his wife was pregnant. Which you'd think is fair enough. That's fair enough, but guess who turned up in Vietnam six months later? <laughs> he did. He did, yeah. <laughs> There we go. <laughs> yeah. He survived? Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's good news. Okay, well, thanks again, Len. Good on you, mate. Thank you. Thank you.